Cody Lidon. Cody, he was a big baby. He had brown hair. He had my lips. He had big hands. He had the cutest little nose. He was perfect from head to toe. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Welcome to Still a Part of Us. We are so grateful that we have a chance to chat with Tammy today. Tammy um, reached out to us and she has such a unique and heartbreaking story. and, And so I'm so grateful that she is willing to share something so personal and yeah, and near and dear to her heart. So thank you so much, Tammy, for coming on. Welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for allowing me to share my story. Yeah. So a little bit of context. Can you um, tell us a little bit about who you are, where where you're located in the country, and uh, maybe a little bit about what your family looked like when Cody was born? Well, my name's Tammy, and I, um, when Cody was born, um, I lived in Washington State. Um, I was married for about almost four years at the time. I had a two-year-old daughter. Uh, Her name was Tyler, and we were excited um, to to grow our family and uh, wanted a little boy, you know. Yeah. Everything was going great. Great little family. And then can you give us also a little bit of context when Cody was born? Because this is the other thing that is unique about your interview is um, when, when was Cody born? Cody was born on September 27th of 1995, mm-hmm. so it's been a while, Yep. and he passed on December 1st of 1995. Uh, he was two, two months and four days old. Yeah, so we will be kind of getting into that a little bit more, but um, thank you for kind of giving us a little bit of context, because it is has been a number of years, and we have so few of those, and, and it's nice to have some some people that have gone ahead of us, ahead of me, and I really appreciate those people that have gone ahead and said, basically, like, we've lived through this, and, and, it, and it's possible to, to make it through. So thank you. Um, okay, so, so you and your um, husband were living in Washington State. You had your little Tyler already, super excited about Cody, and... Tell me, uh, so were you, were you, did you have any issues getting pregnant with Cody or was that just like, oh, pretty easy, doing it, doing good? And no, I had no problems getting pregnant at all. Okay. There was no issues. Um, actually my, one of my sisters, she was pregnant and, um, it was, I must've got pregnant in December of 94 and cause January came around and, um, New Year's and I just didn't feel right. And I was like, I think I might be pregnant. Uh, Uh (laughs) So (laughs) so I thought, well, we'll just go see. And lo and behold, I was. And uh, so I was hoping for a boy, you know, and, um, and my dad kept saying, no, no, I'm only going to have granddaughters. (laughs) So he didn't think I was going to have a boy. And Oh, that's so I was still funny. hoping. <laughs> that is so still, funny. <laughs> I was still hoping. Yeah. And, you know, back then we didn't get ultrasounds like they do now. Right. You know, we were very limited to ultrasounds. Right. Okay. So when you did find out, you just took a regular pregnancy test. Did you tell your husband at the time? Were, were you guys excited about it? Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. It was... It was like, uh, we're going to have another child and, uh, you know, never, never crossed my mind of anything happening. You know, I never heard yeah. really of miscarriages or anything like that. Um, didn't have Google. Yeah. You didn't have computers, nope. you know, nope. yep. the only book that I had was the 
what to expect when you're expecting book, you know, that was right. the, you know, book I had with my first pregnancy. And so I kept it and that's what I used. And I was like, okay, where, where, where am I, you know? Yeah. Just, yep, going along. So, um, yeah, to give us a little bit of context because of how, how healthcare has changed and, and, um, women's health, I guess, has, has changed. So di- when you did get the pregnancy, like, test back, and did you have to go into the hospital? I mean, sorry, did you go into your doctor's office pretty quickly? Or did you wait a little bit? How, tell me how your doctor's office um, visits went with in those early few months. I didn't have a doctor there because I had my first daughter in California. So oh, okay. I had to... Um, First, I had to find out if I was, I had to have it on paper first. Mm. So instead of going to like the hospital or something, I just went up to Planned Parenthood, you know, to, you know, get tested. And um, of course, my sister went with me and it was so funny. They, I took the test and they called me back and they made my sister wait in the waiting room. And um, they sat me down and they said, I have to tell you, you are pregnant. And I said, okay, well, that's great. And they (laughs) said, you know, you have options. And I said, no, uh, my options is I'm going to have this baby. So it's okay. You know, I just need it on paper. Please write it down, you know. (laughs) So, um, so I ended up going to the doctor that my sister was going to. Okay. So made it easy. It just seemed like I think it was later I was farther along before I could get in there. So I think I was more like almost 10 weeks before my first appointment. Gotcha. Okay. It was a lot longer. Yeah. Well, when you have the established care with a new provider, it does take a while to get in the door, it seems like. (laughs) Yes. And what was funny about it is he was... The the doctor was the father of one of the one of the students that I went to school with, and I didn't realize that at the beginning. I oh. was like, "Oh, this is good." <laughs> oh man, that's small world, so, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, but he was a wonderful doctor and um, very caring, and helped me out with all the questions or any concerns I had. Awesome. Um, all the appointments that I went to went great. Mm -hmm. Um, We did have some questions about, you know, the due date at the beginning, Mm -hmm. but we had questions with my first daughter because she's very small. Um, They wanted to change her due date as well, but she came early, two weeks early, which is not considered early. Right. Um, But she's tiny at 30 years old, she's only 411. So she's, oh. you know, I have small children. Yeah, she's super <laughs> petite. Okay. So, yeah. so, and she was only four pounds, 12 ounces. Oh. <laughs> and so she was really little. Yeah, super and, little. Um, so I told, I told my doctor, I said, please don't change the due date. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I know when I got pregnant. And, and so he, we kind of fought back and forth for a while, but then finally I caught up to the due date, you know. Oh, and okay. So he didn't change it at all. And so we, I went to the doctors and we came to the anatomy scan about mm-hmm. the 20 week mark. And that was the only ultrasound that I got. Yeah. So we went to it. They were having problems trying to get his. At that time, we didn't know it was a boy. His heart, mm. they needed to look at his heart. But they did, they said, they did ask us if we wanted to know the gender. And we're like, yeah, we mm-hmm. do. Please. Mm-hmm. And they said, you're having a boy. And he was not afraid to show us either. <laughs> and <laughs> I said, could you please make sure you, you write that down? I need to show my dad. Yeah, you're like having a boy. (laughs) My dad don't believe me, you know. (laughs) So um, he did. So I I have that ultrasound still to this day. And um, (laughs) oh, that's so sweet. I I bet my dad a steak dinner on that that he was a boy. Yeah, you you needed the proof (laughs) of that, so that's good. (laughs) I did. (laughs) It was wonderful. It just 
I always wanted a boy. Yeah. And um, so I was so excited. And um, then we had to go back and just check his heart again to yeah. make sure. And that ultrasound went really well. You know, he was in the was right fine. position. Oh, everything was fine. All everything was perfect. Perfect. Okay. So the due date was getting closer. Well, and what was his, what did the doctor, when did you guys finally decide, which due date did you guys finally decide on? Oh, his due date was September 15th. Oh, okay. So it was, okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, we bowled on a bowling league. Oh, okay. And so it was very fun. Uh, seemed to be pregnant helped me a lot. You know, really? <laughs> yes. The yes. balance was changed, mm -hmm. huh? Oh, yes. this is fascinating. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was so fun. So that year, our team and my grandmother bowled with us. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. And that year, our team made it to state. And I, um, <laughs> the due date passed. And we had a tournament out of town. So I had to ask my doctor if I could go out of town. And he said, why are you going out of town? Well, I had to fib a little bit. What did and you so, say? Because I was not going to miss this. No. <laughs> so he's like, when was your due date? And I said, last week. And he goes, no, you can't go. <laughs> and I said, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> So I went. I just made sure I knew where the hospital was. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> just in case. So we went, and I bowled, and my grandma was talking to the little ladies up there, you know, what's your granddaughter do? Yeah. Oh, she's due last week. Oh, no, we're going to have a baby on the, on the bowling lanes. No, I'm not going to have a baby on the bowling lane. No, he's not coming. I'm telling you. So... We did that. Everything was fine. No contractions, no nothing. So we finally made a date for induction. Okay. On 20, 27. Wait, I have to ask, did, how'd you yes. guys do on the bowling tournament? Um, I think we came in third place, I believe. Oh. And that's, I mean, that's pretty big. Uh, yeah, that's great. Overall. Yeah. So it was pretty good. <laughs> You know, that balancing. You know. Yeah, I, that must have been the trick. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I just had to ask. <laughs> um, so we get to the day before the due date. Um, I said, you know, I, I really would like to go into labor on my own. I mm, really don't mm -hmm. want to be induced. So the fair was in town. So we took our daughter to the fair on the 26th. And we walked and I walked and I walked all day long, all okay. day. Then we took her back home, which at that time we were living with my parents. Okay. And we um, took her home so somebody could watch her. And I went back to the fair to walk some more. <laughs> I was like, I have walked my legs off. And I was big. Yeah. I was really big and nothing. N not a single Absolutely. contraction, huh? Mm -mm, Whoa. Nothing. This kid wanted to stay in. He was comfortable. So we had to be at the hospital on at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I got up, went to the hospital. And they finally got us in a room at 630. Doctor says, okay, I'll be up there to break your water. And we'll start you on Pitocin. Okay. You know, never had all this done before. Yeah. The induction. And I've heard that it was worse than just going into labor. Right. On own. And Tyler came just fine, right? On her own. Yes. Like she came naturally. I mean, like just on her own. Labor started mm -hmm. fine. Yes. And her labor was seven hours. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Not and too, too fast, but not very long either. By any no, means. no epidural, no nothing. Okay. Okay. So with him, I was probably at like two centimeters when I got mm. into the hospital. So he came in at about 730. 
started all that. And he told me he'd see me in the evening, late evening. Okay. And I said, well, then can I get up and walk this? You know, I wanted to be one of those women that walked around the hospital. Yeah. I just wanted to. Well, finally, they said, okay, fine, we'll let you up. And I didn't really want any pain medicine or nothing. I didn't need it. I you were fine? Hurt. Yeah. So they gave me, I don't know, they, I've never heard of anybody do this, but they put this tensing unit thing around my belly and they said, if you feel the contractions, you can push the button and it will help with the contractions. I said, mm. okay. So I got up and I walked to the door pushing these buttons on these tending unit thing and zapping myself and <laughs> turned it on high. Didn't do nothing, but okay, this is getting really intense, you know. Uh-huh. Took two steps in the hallway and turned back around and says, the baby is coming. They said, no, no, he's not. I said, yes, he is. That can't be. So I said, you need to get the nurse in here. <laughs> and so, Do you want to check? <laughs> mm -hmm. The nurse came in and says, let me call the doctor. Oh, yeah. And um, he was born at 1114. Oh. <laughs> like you guys started at, I mean, because you got into the room at 630? Yeah. And he started the Pitocin at, he broke my water at 730 and 8 o'clock. He Started the Pitocin, broke my water by 8 o'clock, and I had him at 11.14. Whoa! That is fast. Yes. Th no wonder they, they were like, no, no, he can't be here yet. Holy cow, yes. that was so fast. Yes. So you didn't, you didn't have to push too, too much then, it sounds like? No, no. No, he was, luckily the doctor was still at the hospital. And he oh, good. Didn't leave. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Yeah, not coming back tonight. I mean, <laughs> come yeah. back and turn back around. <laughs> and then at the time I had his uh, his father there, you know, uh, my my husband at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and my my mom was my mom was there. So it it was just just simple and I not having any medicine or anything, I was just, you just know, walk, yeah, feeling walk. good, you know, no big yeah, deal. Yeah. I did have to have some stitches. Or, you okay. Know, so you there was a little work. tearing, but yeah. Um, actually, it wasn't tearing. It was just that he had to cut me a little bit, but. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he was six pounds, 15 ounces and 19 inches long. Oh, he's a good little size there. That's good. So compared to my first one. Yes, he's huge. And, <laughs> yeah, he was much, much bigger. <laughs> so, yes, and the joy of just, you know, hearing him cry and just the, he was just so perfect, so perfect. Yeah. And yeah. Wh um, why did you guys, uh, how did you choose the name Cody? I, and well, yeah, his name in general, like tell me how you, chose his name um well with even tyler tyler we didn't know what we were having mm. we it was a surprise because she didn't want to cooperate mm, right okay? right one right. ultrasound that's it yep you're well, just gonna have to guess yeah with cody i wanted the same i wanted to f name my child Either way, if it was a girl or a boy, it would be the same name. Okay. So if it was a girl, it would have been with a K and I E. And if okay. it was a boy, it would be C Y. Gotcha. So once we found out, um, it was a C Y. And Cody, I don't know really how we came about it, but I really liked the name Cody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Lee Dawn is my father's middle name. Oh. And my dad and mom only had girls. So he was the first grandson that, oh. on, in my family. And so I wanted to give him my dad's middle name. Yeah, that's great. I love family names. There's something so... I don't know, binding and, and it ties you to them, right? Yes. I think that's wonderful. It sounds like you were, were you uh, quite close to your dad? Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, and, and so Cody is um, born and, and you did, it sounds like you had a number of visitors. Your mom was there, your, um, your husband at the time, obviously. And then were other people able to come and visit? Uh, oh, yes. Okay. And did people actually, I don't, I just don't know. I'm not familiar with like <laughs> what visitor policies and then also like what, uh, you know, like how long people stayed in the hospital at that, that time. Cause you know, different, different times. So, so how uh, yes. were people Seems able like to come? So long ago, <laughs> yeah. um, we, um, we, we had visitors all, all day long. And so awesome. since I had them so early in the morning, yeah. I still had to spend the whole night. Oh, okay. So they, they didn't let me just go home. Oh, afterwards. so it was like a one, you had to have, it was like a one night policy, huh? Oh, oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so I was like, okay, so now that that's, we're done with that. Now, they don't tell you <laughs> when you have your second child. I nursed my first child mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, until she was 21 months. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I actually had to wing her while, while I was pregnant with Cody because yes. that could have put me into labor. Yeah. And so I was nursing Cody. And well, after you have the first baby, the second baby, your uterus <laughs> starts, it's a little bit more painful. Mm. And so he, you know, when I was feeding him, it was like, oh, am I having another baby? It felt oh, like, you know, it uh -huh. was, it was really hurting, but they were so good to me. So we had visitors and then I got regular food, you know, they brought me, you know, they would go out and buy food and come in with it. We'd have dinner and stuff. Oh, it was good. just, it was really nice. The yeah. hospital was great. Awesome. Um, the, the staff and everything awesome. was really great. And then did Ty, did Tyler get to come up and miss, meet Cody then, or did you guys go home and, oh, and yes. that's when you, okay. No, she came she, up. She came she up. Came okay, up great. And, um. I'll I'll get to the later what else with Tyler, which is very special. But Tyler was really involved with her brother oh. and her other siblings as yeah. well. So Yay. it was it was great. It was it was wonderful. Okay. So then you guys were able to be discharged the next day. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, because he was perfect. I mean, yeah. it's common for, you know, breastfed babies to have a little bit of jaundice or, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's common. And he was fine other than maybe just a little bit. Yeah. No big deal. Um, so he did not get circumcised at the hospital because mm -hmm. back then insurance does not cover that mm. uh, procedure. So we had to wait. Oh. Um, to do it later, okay. we'd have to find another doctor to do it because mm. his pediatrician wouldn't do it. And so that was another thing that was new to me. Yes. You know, yes. we didn't have right. boys, you know, I know. girls. girls. <laughs> and um, so that was a, a chore trying to find a pediatrician and how to do that and yeah. how that all worked. And <laughs> yeah, it's a new world, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is for sure. And so we went to, you know, the doctor's his is two week and went great. He was gaining mm -hmm. his weight. I mean, he went from six pounds to eight pounds, over eight pounds in two weeks. Oh, goodness. Then, He's a good yeah. eater then, huh? Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Very much so. He was a big boy. <laughs> and, um, he had one thing that he did at a certain time in the evening, he would just fuss, but it mm. wasn't a fuss where he wanted to be picked up. He mm -hmm. didn't want to be fed. He didn't want to be changed. He just fussed. And I huh. couldn't understand what it was. Okay. So I even asked the doctor, is he colic? Is it yeah. something that I'm, you know, eating, you know, should yeah. I stay away from garlic? But I heard garlic is something that babies will suck longer, you know. So doctor says, no, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just his pattern. I'm like, okay. okay. So I watched it and it was his pattern. Mm. That's what he did. It was kind of like he was talking to us in his own little thing, you know. Yeah. And I figured later that I think he was. 
because a few days before he passed, he stopped doing it. Oh. He just started looking and hmm. it was like he was taking in everything. Really? And everybody around him. He was observing, it was, huh? Yes. And so that's what I take out of that fussiness. He was just letting us know he was there. Yeah. And so he went, um, I took him to each appointment on then October 30th was a horrible day. Um, I had to get his circumcision. Okay. Oh, I hear anything. Oh, I would rather have it done in the hospital where, where the mothers don't or fathers or anybody have to witness this. Yeah. I at all. Yeah. (laughs) It was horrible to see and hear my son. Yeah. Being tortured. Yeah. And, um, so that was done and I, you know, the doctor told me I had to do this, this, this. And I'm thinking, well, you just did this. Why am I having to do this and this and this for, yeah, no. Yeah. So I'm like, something's just not right. And so it wasn't his regular pediatrician. And so we, that was October 30th. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, it's just got to heal. It's got to heal. Yeah. So we went through, and I remember Thanksgiving came around, and that was a, a really big thing. I love Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and, and my dad just was so excited, you know, having him on his lap, you know. just Yeah. Every time I see sweet potatoes, it reminds me of my dad. My dad put a little bit on his lips. He wasn't supposed to have food or nothing, but he just wanted him to taste some of his sweet potatoes. <gasps> That's so sweet. What a cute little memory of the two of them. But I didn't realize a week later he wouldn't be there anymore. Um, So on 29th of November, he had his doctor's appointment for his two-month shots. He seemed to have like a little cold. Mm. And um, so I went to the doctors and, you know, they're doctors. They know what they're doing, you know. I got to listen to doctors. And um, I didn't realize back then, you know, a lot of the the shots that they gave him had live viruses in them. So the doctor told me that we're going to give him his shots. I said, okay. Didn't think anything of it. If he's got a cold, he should be fine. Put him on antibiotics. Okay. I've done the shot thing before with my daughter. No Mm -hmm. big deal. Got through that. He was going to be a little fussy. And um, he had one dose of antibiotics. Then on Thursday, he had the first, the full four doses. Thursday, he was, he was acting his normal self. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that fussiness. Time came around, mm-hmm. you know, when it was my sister and her husband and, and myself. And, and at the time, my husband forgot to mention that my parents were getting ready to sell their home and move oh. to Montana. Okay. <laughs> so we okay. had realtors coming in and out of the house. Yeah. And so my parents were gone. They were in Montana. And um, we were all sitting there and. He was just so fussy. So my cousin, which this is really the ironic part, she works. She worked at the time at nine one one, and so I was talking to her on the phone, just talking to her, and she goes, "Bring him here. Bring him to the station." I said, "You want me to bring him down there?" She said, "Yeah." And so we bundled them up because it was cold because mm-hmm. it's winter time. Mm-hmm. Bundled them up, and we drove down to the nine one one station. Mm-hmm. And she took off his little snowsuit and mm-hmm. passed him around, showed everybody him, tell him how beautiful he was. Yeah. And so everyone there in the nine one one station seen him. Yeah. 
We got back home and we were in the living room and I had him on the couch and, and he fell asleep and the, the news came on. I remember the news came on and we were getting ready to go to bed and I was picking him up and he made this little, little like smushy face like, yeah. oh, mom, why are you moving me? I'm mm-hmm. just comfortable. You know? mm-hmm. So, and he had a, a bassinet right next to where I slept and I took him to bed, put him in his bed. And um, during the night, I knew he was kind of moving around a little bit. And I thought, no, I'm not going to be that mom. It's just going to grab him because he moved. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to wait until he cries because I was Mm -hmm. nursing him. He never cried. And my husband at the time jumped up. He looked at him and he was blue. So, those people that see my son at nine one one is now getting a call because my son was gone, and I jumped up and I looked and I seen him and I ran out of the room and I yelled. My sister was there and I yelled. I said, "He's not breathing, He's not breathing!" And so she ran back there. And she comes back and she says, you said he just stopped breathing. I said, no, he's not breathing. He's not breathing. And so my husband, at the time, he he, he called 911. Well, he was trying to do CPR and he couldn't get his mouth open because his tongue was swollen. And... um. When I ran down the hallway to open the door, my parents weren't there. My dad wasn't there. I felt so lost. Everything went into slow motion. I didn't know where I was. The paramedics was on their way, and I heard them coming, but I couldn't go back there. And then I remember them coming in, and I remember this. One paramedic just screaming in my face. She was so close to my face telling me, where do you want us to take him? Where? Where do you want us to go? And I said, I don't care. Just take him to a hospital. Please save him. Well, my husband, he lifted up my son and he said, he said the par- the other paramedic's name, which come to find out, was the nurse at his doctor's office. It was his rotation to be on the ambulance. So he seen my son on Wednesday. Yeah. And he's like, first of all, he's like, why is this person calling me by my name? How does he know who I am? And why is he telling me to save his baby? Yeah. And, um, I've seen them carrying them out, and then they went. They wouldn't leave. They they were just out there. They wouldn't leave, and I'm like, why aren't they leaving? You know, they're not moving. Why aren't they leaving? And um, I did see a you know a police officer pull up, and but they never came in my ha- the house or anything. I was confused. I didn't know. I didn't know what 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 to do. I was just froze. I was just. It was like I froze. And the first thing I did was ran to that book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, because it's that part you skip over. And all I seen was SIDS. And I said, why didn't I read this? I should have read this. If I would have known, I would have went to bed. I would have stayed awake. But the what ifs would have killed me. So they finally left, and then um, we had to figure out how to get to the hospital. So somehow we we drove, of course, but it was like, I don't remember the drive. It wasn't very far, but I don't remember. And I remember walking in there, and I said, just don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. 
And they put us in this room and just left us in this room. And I remember the doctor coming in and he said, we've done everything we could, but he's gone. And I could see the compassion in his face. And I'm like, N -n -n, he can't be gone. He's fine. And they're asking me who to call. Who, who, who do you want us to call? And I'm like, well, my dad, he's, he's not here. But he's in Montana. No, I, I they didn't have cell phones back then. I don't even know how the hospital got where he was. You know, I don't know how they got the phone number. I have no idea. I don't know. It was like they were, they got it out of the sky or something. I don't know. And um, then my aunt lived there in, in town. So um, they somehow got her number. I don't know how they got her number. Um, have no idea. Then. I just remember this person kept touching me, just kept touching my head. And I was like, I wish people would just stop touching me, you know? And I knew I needed to pump because I was hurting so bad. And I said, please, somebody give me a breast pump. I need to pump. I need to feed my baby. And they're like, he's gone. And I said, but I hurt. I need to feed him. So they went upstairs and got me a breast pump. But they told me not to, to pump too much because if you did, you'd keep, you'd keep producing milk. And um, so I, I tried to pump as much as possible. And um, so... My dad was on the phone, and all I could do is say, Daddy's gone. And he's like, The dog? Because he had a dog, and we were supposed to be watching him. I said, Dad, no. Cody's dead. He said, Tammy, no. What are you saying? I said, Cody's gone. He goes, Where are you? I said, Dad, I'm at the hospital. And he goes, don't, don't do anything until I get there. Now it's a six hour drive from where my dad is. And I think, you know, they were placed in Montana for a reason. They weren't supposed to be home because they wouldn't have been able to handle the situation at all. And it was hard enough, Yeah. but it would have been really bad for them to see this. Yeah. Um, they they said that they were on their way home. They were going to get in the car and come home. And um, so we uh, ended up, um, the doctor, his pediatrician called us. Well, I got to back up. Uh, my aunt showed up. And, um, oh, and, that, and they told us that we have no choice, that there will be an autopsy. Okay. Um, because of the fact that um, he was under the age of one. Yeah. Okay. And um, I believe it's a Illinois 1976 Illinois Act that that it has to be done. Yeah. Okay. And they refused to donate any of his, you know, none of his organs or anything like oh, that. Okay. Um, because the unknown cause. Yeah. At that time. But they did. They did try everything under the sun. Um, I I have all the medical records. Do you? Because I, I you're like I. I, I want to know. That. Yeah, I want to know. I I want to know everything. Yeah. So um, I didn't get it at that time, but I did because. So they came in and asked me if I wanted to go see him, and at first I said no, and I said no. Wait a minute. I have to, I have to go see him, but I can't go by myself, please. So my aunt, she said, I'll go with you. And I said, okay. So I went into room nine. So went to room nine and there's my baby on his gurney. 
and I didn't want leaving him there. Even after 28 years, I can still see that picture. <sighs> so we had to make arrangements to what funeral home he would be going to. The only one I knew is the one that my grandma had, my other grandma had went to. So that's the one I said, just yeah. take him there. We were going to bury him because at that time I didn't know nothing about cremation or anything. Yeah. So burial was the way it was going to be. So um, we went back from the hospital. We were going to go to my aunt's house. Um, it didn't think it was a good idea to go home at that moment. But we had to make a stop. My husband at the time had to get his paycheck. And because um, he was supposed to be at work, but he, you know, he, he wasn't at work. Yes. And he went in there and somebody said to him, well, at least you didn't have time to get attached. <gasps> I have no words. Yeah. Well, I had a few words. Yeah. I, I... <laughs> yeah. God. I asked God to forgive me. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was not a good thing. Um, so we went to my aunt's for a little while. And then I said, we ended up getting, um, had an appointment with the pediatrician. She said, because we his autopsy was scheduled at three o'clock that afternoon. Okay. And she told us that she was going to be in the autopsy because she wanted to know if she missed something. So I guess I could have took that a couple ways, you know, like, uh, did you do something wrong or was there something that you shouldn't have done or, you know, yeah, what are huh. you trying to tell me here? You know, cause it yeah. kind of confused me. Yeah. But then, you know, I was numb, very, very numb. And she said, you can come back at about seven o'clock tonight and then. I can let you know if there was any findings it, and it's not the final autopsy report, but it'll at least give us some kind of clues of what's, what's happened. What happened. I said, okay. So I went home and um, I needed to take a shower. My grandma, my poor grandma, she wanted trying to make me eat and I just couldn't eat. Just couldn't eat. Oh, and this is, this is a cute, Thing. This is just adorable how little kids, how they, they view grief at the time. My cousin had to pick up her son at school. He was little, hit in elementary school. And I, I just took a ride with her. And um, well, actually, I went home first. And when I did that, I had all my breast milk in the freezer. And I just started taking them out and just putting them in the sink and then thawing them. And I was just, it was like I was just wasting it all. It was, it was just horrible. That was just horrible. Yeah. Mm. And um, so I took a shower and I just, we went back to my aunt's until my parents got back into town. And um, so I went to go with my cousin to get her son at school and it was the it was the cutest thing he the innocence of children <laughs> he gets in the back seat of the car and he goes and Tammy I'm so sorry about your baby but we're gonna go get our Christmas tree today <laughs> it was just so it was so precious because yeah. his little world was still going yeah and um you know and we're really close to as of today, you know, we're yeah. really close. And um, he's like, Auntie, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that when I was little. I said, Honey, you know what? I did not take it bad at no. all. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you were precious. So um, we went to the um, doctor's appointment. She says, I didn't miss anything. There wasn't anything, nothing. And they deemed it to be SIDS. Um, my son weighed 12 pounds and four ounces <gasps> when he died. 
he was a big boy. He was a big boy. Yes, a very big boy. They really just so they they deemed it SIDS. They did they didn't have anything nothing that clued into any sort of reaction he had or any nothing. No. 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 Oh, Tammy, I'm so sorry. And I've, I, you know, um, well, I'll probably get into that later, um, of all the research I've done and, you know, and what I've done since, you know, his death yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff and what's very important to me. But I can get into that later. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that night after that, um, they were telling me how I can, you know, dry up my milk and because they didn't want to give me a pill or, and, and stuff like that. But yet they told me not to pump, but yet it was very painful, so painful. and, you know, that's all my body knew what to do. You know, yeah. I couldn't sleep in the, the bedroom and I just, I was just numb. And Saturday we had an appointment at the funeral home. And um, trying to write up an obituary because I I wanted one. I wanted one done. I wanted one of my son. You know, I believe he he deserved it. He was alive. He was, you know, he's a little human being. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we did that. And they said, well, let me get a casket for you so you can look at it. And that. When they walked in and put it on the table, I was like, what in the world are you doing? You, you're not supposed to just put it, you know, walk in the room with it. We're supposed to go to a room and look at them, you know, but not for infants, you know. Yeah. And he had to have a bigger one because he was a he little was a bigger. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was beautiful, though. Oh, my gosh. It was so beautiful. I wish... I wish now I would have taken a picture. I wish I would have done a little bit more, but I, I can't change that. Um, you know, sometimes we didn't have cell phones, so we didn't have a camera readily yeah. available. Yes. Luckily, yeah. at his birth, the only reason why I have some birth pictures is because my sister did bring in a, a throwaway camera. Oh, what a blessing. Thankful. I am so thankful. Thankful that she did that. Yeah. And um, so I only got a little. Oh, and back to the pictures real quick. Um, at the hospital, they had these people that came in and did, they were called first photos. Uh-huh. And they took pictures of the babies. Yeah. And um, so I wrote them and asked them, since my son passed away, if I could take them anywhere to get copied. Because you're not supposed to copy those pictures. Oh, and okay. They, yes, they gave me written permission to do so to be able to. So that was a, a, a joy because yes. that's all I have. Yeah, that's so know. kind. Yeah, very much so. Um, so then um, we did all the arrangements, and so now, now it's to find something for him to wear. And by that time, my ex, well, now at that time, they're my in laws. Uh, they flew, they lived in Florida and mm-hmm. they flew to be there and uh, they kept telling me, you need to get a hat. You need to get a hat. I kept hearing that over and over again, get him a hat. I'm like, I don't want my baby to wear a hat. Why is people telling me to get a hat for? Mm-hmm. Tammy, just get a hat. I'm like, I don't want a hat. I'm not getting a hat. So I found this little outfit for him to wear. Didn't realize at the time until it was actually on him. <laughs> it said baby transport. It had little, you know, it had little cars on it, little planes and stuff, yeah. but it said baby transport. And I said, that's perfect for him to go to heaven, you know. No. He's one. It was red corduroy and it was just yeah. so beautiful. It was just awesome. Transferred. But the moment sun, uh, it was Sunday, we were able, oh, 
Saturday at the funeral home, they told me that I could take them home. Oh. But if I did that, I'd have to take the casket with me. Oh, and, okay. And I looked at them like, oh, well, hmm. I live with my parents, so that probably would not be a good idea. So I thought of everybody else and, and, and decided that's not a good idea. Yeah. So that's interesting. I was going to say that's interesting that that was an option because I think there would be many places that would not offer that. It would just be like, they're just going to stay here and visit. So anyway. Yeah. I thought Um, that was odd too, but I was like, huh. Huh. Maybe I will take some time and spend. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I would. Tammy, I actually, can I back up really quick for one question? I, Mm -hmm. so, um, when did your parents get back into town and um, how, how were they? It sounds like they were quite obviously close to Cody and uh, loves, loves you very much and wants to support you. So how, how did they take things? Were they okay when they got back into town? Um, well, they got into town. It was later that evening. Okay. Um, Cause it took about six hours. So I would have to say it was closer to before we went to the doctors at seven. So they got there probably about five or six, I think. Okay. Not a hundred percent, but um, my dad took it, took it kind of hard. And um, my dad, um, he, he, he was an alcoholic before and he had stopped drinking and this hit him really hard and it made him start drinking again and like even my dad has since then stopped drinking again which is wonderful you know he's a it just he he couldn't handle the pain yeah you know and my mom I don't think she could wrap her head around it yeah and um so, and I am their oldest daughter, so of three. So it was, it was, it was a trying time for sure. And yeah. then they're in the process of trying to move, sell their home. Yes. There's a lot. Yeah. On top of that. That's, yeah. And knowing now that my son, you know, they deemed him to pass at the hospital, but he technically really passed at the house, you know, but in record wise, they did you know, say he coded at the hospital, but he was already gone at home. Okay. And so my dad did not like that. Yeah. He, he, he wanted to sell it as quickly as possible at that point. Because yeah. Um, okay. Faster than he really should have. Mm-hmm. And um, so with the in-laws coming in and uh, my parents, Sunday, they, the funeral home wanted just the, the immediate family to see the baby. And uh, my parents couldn't do it at that time. They chose not to come. Mm-hmm. And his parents did. And it was just an itty bitty room. But they were going to, they planned on moving him into a bigger room later. Um, but it was just a little room. And I walked in there and they said, you can, you can hold him. I said, I can. And they said, yeah, we'll get you a chair. Well, I wasn't afraid. I just went over there and I had a blanket that was Tyler's and we wanted to wrap him up in it. And, uh, he was going to have that blanket with him. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I picked him up and I sat down and I rocked him and I just, well, I had to look at everything. And I wanted to understand why they wanted a hat. Well, I know why they wanted a hat. But you know what? He wasn't getting a hat. I don't care. I covered it up to save everybody else so they didn't have to see it with the blanket. And And that's because he had uh, the autopsy, kind of the, the stitching and such. Well, I thought they were stitches, but they're not stitches. Oh, is staples, they're, isn't it? No, they they were like toothpicks. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I thought, what in the world did they do? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I, I guess as a mom, you overlook everything. You just see your child as yeah. the way they are supposed to look. Yeah. And that's what I did. I just said, wow, he's just a little cold, so I'll just... You know, wrap him up in his blankie and he's going to be fine. Yeah. And I just kept rubbing his finger. His finger was flat and I kept trying to puff it back up. And I don't know why it was like that, but it was driving me crazy. I just kept rubbing that finger and then his lips, his lips were so skinny and yeah. he had big lips. I had big lips at one time too. And, and I was like, why is his lips like that? I was just like, fine. I was, I was perfect. I was happy. I was, I was okay. And then that was a short visit and I put him back and it was like, um, I put him back. Then I knew I was coming back the next day. Mm -hmm. So they said, when we were leaving, they said, we apologize, but we should have asked you if, you wanted to dress him and I could have, I could have dressed him if, if I, if they would have asked me to. And so I missed out on that. Yeah. Um, the next day was Monday. Now we bowled on Monday. And um, so we went up to the, the funeral home and it was a bigger room. And that's when we took Tyler up there. Mm -hmm. And we had a picture of him and we showed Tyler. And so she knew her brother was in the casket and um, she wasn't afraid at all. We told her that her brothers, you know, went to heaven, you know, and, um, and everything. And um, she decided to visit the next person over and asked why they didn't have a lot of flowers, but I had to get her back over to her brother. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was like little kids. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, but they had the rocking chair there, but I noticed that he had bruising on his face from when they tried to resuscitate him. Oh, uh -huh. And I said, could you just do something about this makeup? Yeah. And they said, well, we'll take him and take care of it. I said, no, 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 no. You bring me the makeup and let me do it. I will do it. And they said, are you sure? And I said, yes, I will. I will fix it. Let me fix it. So they did. And um, they said, do you want us to cut his hair? And I said, can I have some of his hair? So they cut some of his hair for okay. me. And, oh, it was so, so pretty. It's like a an auburn color hair, mm, you know, yeah. just so beautiful. And, um, but my parents still couldn't come in. Oh. But they could look at the door, stand at the door and see me holding him in the rocker. Okay. And be okay with it. Okay. But they couldn't come and see him in the casket. Yeah. So not a lot of people came and seen him in the casket. But I just felt, I felt whole. I felt I, I'm okay. Yeah. He's fine. He's, He's fine. Yeah. And so that was on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I went back, got to spend the day with him again. I held him and rocked him and rocked him. And then Wednesday came, December 6th. That was the day of our service. Hmm. We had a graveside service. And um, so I got to back up for just one second. The, the pastor, we called my pastor, which he has been my pastor for forever since I was in, since I was a teenager and okay. I'm still in contact with him to this yeah. day. Yeah. Um, we called him and he came over to my aunt's house. And the first words I said to him is, why did God do this? And his words to me were, God is not as the taker of life. He's the giver of life. His mission on this earth was done. We all have a mission and it was, you know, it was done. And, you know, I hold on to that because there was a purpose for him to be here. I may not know what that purpose was yet, but 
maybe one day I will find out. Mm -hmm. Um, So that helped. So I knew that my pastor was going to be the one that that does the funeral for Mm me. So he was there. um, Well, we were at the funeral home. We were going to just have a graveside service. We weren't Mm -hmm. going to have a service at the the funeral home because it was just the cost was so much. Mm -hmm. And my parents had already turned in their uh, headstones to, you know, get my my son a headstone and the opening of the vault and the shutting of the vault. And, you know, there was just so much that I didn't. Oh, my gosh. Uh, You never think about it like at your age, you wouldn't have thought about that. You're, I mean, yeah, you just don't realize how much it, how expensive it is. Yeah. I was 20, I was almost 24 years old and I never thought that I would in a wild, my wildest years that I would be having to plan a funeral for my, my son. Yeah. And I waited for, you know, and I, I said, this is, this is just wrong. Yeah. I don't want to be doing this. And, um, so I, um, so they put him in the casket and they said, do you want to shut it? And I said, we can't shut it. He can't breathe. I said, please don't shut it. He cannot breathe. And they said, listen, he He's already gone. He he don't he doesn't breathe. So in my mind, my mind was keeping him alive because I could hold him, I could touch. But once that casket lid shut, it was final. And he couldn't he couldn't breathe. So at that moment reality hit me. My son is gone. So we got to ride in the car with him to the funeral home. And he's actually, I mean, to the grave site. And he's buried up in the children area, uh, the baby cemetery area, um, where my grandmother, my other grandmother is buried in the same cemetery. And, and if you look up Just up the stairs, it's a big monument of the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. And it's just, he's just in a beautiful spot. And um, that day, it was not cold. There was snow on the ground, but it was not cold. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to my aunt the other day, and she says, this is the one view I'll never get out of my head is we had we had pallbearers for him and uh, we had four pallbearers that carried him from the car to where they laid him she says I've never seen such a little casket and and people carrying it she goes I'll never get that out of my head And and it was it was just a beautiful service, and um, my um, my ex mother in law, um, she she was a recording artist, and there's a song that she recorded, uh, not at that time, but she had a song that we played at the funeral, and then there was a few other songs that we played, you know, Amazing Grace, and then um, a song by Vince Gale. Uh, Go rest high on the mountain that had just came out. That was just beautiful. And my pastor said a few words and because he knew the family for so long. And it was just, you know, what do you say? You know, this is not supposed to be happening. Um, you're not supposed to be doing this. Um, but then we, uh, everybody started leaving and we were going to have a get together at the house. And I just, I knelt down after, after the, um, the service and I put my hand on the cast. I said, I said, God, I can't do this by myself because this is going to be hard. I didn't want to leave him there. 
And I said, you know, every year I have to bring a picture up here. But in my mind, he was still going to have a picture. He was going to grow. I wouldn't have a new picture every year. You know, I still did not get it. My mind was just protecting it. Yeah. Self, you know, so. Um, so we went back to the house and everybody was getting together. And my um, my cousin's ex-husband at the time they were married, he, she goes, so he goes, so, okay, now that that's over with, you can just now move on. <laughs> And I looked at him and asked him if he buried his son today. He said, no. And I said, well, then you need to keep your mouth shut. Good job. People just don't get it sometimes. Nope. Wow. So the rest of the, I wanted his, um, I wanted all the records. I called and I got every record. Um, in his autopsy report, when I got it back, it's this is this is so bad. Um, the one thing I did find out in his autopsy report is now it took about six weeks for us to get it back. Okay, yeah, it does take some time. Yeah, yeah. That when I got his medical records, the doctor had deemed him saying that he had uh, pneumonia, oh. and that's why she put him on antibiotics. Okay. Well, in his autopsy report stated he had no pneumonia, he was fine, and that he was uncircumcised. <laughs> and I said, oh. So I went to that doctor's office. I stood there and I said, I need a copy of his records. And they said, we'll mail them to you. I said, no, I'll stand right here. I ain't going anywhere. Go ahead. Copy them. Do what you need to do. And um, I said, they said, no, we'll mail. I said, no, I'll wait. I'm right here waiting. It's not a big deal. No, no. So we, I waited and they finally gave it to me. One piece of paper or two pieces of paper, no big deal. And I said, I need to talk to the biggest person in this building. <laughs> and he comes out and he goes, is there a problem? I said, hmm, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? So I said, What's this paper say? Oh, yeah, Mel was circumcised, blah, blah, blah. I said, no. What's this paper say? He's reading. He goes, what is this? I said, an autopsy report. And he goes, I said, well, lucky for you, he didn't die of this. I'm just saying I have a bill with you. I'm not paying it. Yeah. (laughs) And so the doctor did get reprimanded for not doing his circumcision correctly. (sighs) My poor son got, you know, yeah. I was not going to let get cut get, on like that and not mm, somebody get away with it. Yeah. 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 Good job for you. Good job. For you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I, I would have to say the first year was a numb year. I yeah, probably barely tell you not much for that year. Yeah, it was so numb. I was numb. I know on his first birthday, I always I always have a cake on his birthday. Always. I still do. No matter where I'm at, what I'm doing, I have cake on his birthday. <laughs> and um, yeah, the first year was very numb. And then we decided that luckily we didn't make any drastic moves to not have any more children because Mm -hmm. we had our girl and boy and so we were we we had the option to have more children yeah we didn't want Tyler to have um no living siblings right but Tyler knew of her brother yeah and we decided that we would try to have another child and it would never to replace Cody. It yeah. would just add to our family. Yes. And uh, so we ended up pregnant again. She was, she, uh-huh. we didn't know at the time until mm-hmm. she was born. 
Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We had no idea because she was very stubborn. I would us. show. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. And uh, I had the same doctor and a uh, wonderful doctor because he understood what we went through. Yes. So uh, very compassionate. But at the beginning, I had the positive test, but he's like, when I finally seen him, I had to see the nurse first to confirm. Mm -hmm. Then it took a while to get into the doctors to see him. And by the time I seen him, he's like, who told you you were pregnant? And I'm like, what? And he's feeling my, you know, belly and everything. And he just said, come on, we're going to go do an ultrasound. And lo and behold, the way that I don't know, my uterus was or whatever, it wasn't, he couldn't feel it correctly. Or, oh. You know, and I was actually 13 weeks pregnant. Oh, okay. He just, and he goes, tears are coming down my face. Yeah. That, I would have been I'm freaking like, oh out. God, you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, so with my rainbow baby, Shelby, it would have been Shelby either way. Mm hmm. And uh, this time, if it was a, if it, well, if it was a girl, it would have been IE and well, it was a girl mm -hmm. and um, she came on her due date oh. without the doctor. The doctor wasn't even there. What? I, <laughs> I put my water uh, broke and I said, I have to go to the hospital and we had to take a couple of stops to pick up my ex-mother-in-law and my and Tyler dropped Tyler off we had to make all these little pit stops and right. I'm in labor yeah yeah get there past the coffee shop go upstairs and I'm like okay come on come on and I go up there and they said I was at three okay this is painful I might I might need an epidural this time and they're like okay okay well it was shift change of course and I did request the nurse that helped deliver Cody oh, uh -huh. to be, and since we delivering at the same hospital, they gave us a bigger room. Oh, nice. Because they knew our situation. Yeah. And um, she just came back from vacation and she just came on duty. And when she, I said, I think, because I was only at a three mm -hmm. when I came in and that was like less than 10 minutes yeah. prior to that. Yeah. And I said, I think I need one. And she goes, okay, okay, we'll check here. We'll see. And she goes, you can't have one. I said, what? She goes, Tammy, you're at a nine. I said, how did I? I was like, oh, no. Oh. And so she went to get the IV. She's trying to get the IV in. And my mom goes, isn't that the head? <laughs> And she goes, oh, no. And she slaps it in and she's catching this baby. Catching the baby. Yeah. She's the one that delivered the baby, essentially. She did. She did. Yeah. And she's like, you have a little girl. <laughs> well, that's actually a really, like, nice special tie. I like that yeah. a lot. <laughs> that she was there. And she was she was the one. <laughs> that yeah. Did it. And now I had to spend the whole night. Oh. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so she was born in, um, 97. Yeah. So, uh, my kids are two years apart. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Shelby was my first rainbow baby. And then I did end up having another one after Shelby and, um, I had another little a girl now being pregnant. It was kind of scary afterwards. Yeah. I know that I, I did distance myself. I felt from Shelby. Oh, mm -hmm. I went back to, I went to work uh, quicker. I thought that if something happens, I didn't want to be there. Yeah. It'd be easier if I wasn't there. So that, it, yeah. Your brain does so many things to protect yourself from trauma. It's crazy. And really, you know, all my girls are very close. We're very close. So, you know, that was just, like you said, my brain protecting myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of the fear, you know. Yeah. It's very real. Like, you, yeah. You're happy 
chubby little baby, like all of a sudden passes away in the middle. How can you not be scared? It was, it was so, it was so hard because my sister had boys and I was like, you know, I was supposed to have my son. Mm -hmm. And now my sister had her, her baby that was two months older than Cody. Oh, and and, they're two months to the day apart. Yeah. And to watch him grow up and just, yeah. Think about, yeah. It's, it's hard to know and to see her sometimes Mm -hmm. because it's like that's what he would be right now and you know she's actually getting ready to have a baby oh and it's like you know would Cody be you know married married? how many kids would he have and um so it's sad because it's now this part of grief missing out as an adult, you know, because even though he's been gone so long, it seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, my youngest daughter, she has a son and she told me what she was naming him. And he's a year old. He just turned a year. Well, he'll be two in March. She says, Oh, mom, his name's going to be Cody. And I said, Oh, can we just do middle name? She said, No. I said, Oh, goodness, how am I going to do this? Seriously, I, I mean, it really, it probably was scary, three for, scary yeah. for, for me because I, yeah, how am I going to say that all mm-hmm. the time? You know? And so she said, I'll change it to a K. And so I had to prepare myself. They don't live in the same town. So I had to prepare myself. And I was like, okay, it's Cody with a K. It's a K. It's a, it, this is my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so she wanted to name her son after her brother yeah. that she never met. That she, yeah, she never did. And- yeah. So my kids know their brother. Yeah. And Cody's always been a part of everything. I think that's wonderful. Yes. You know, because he's a part of our lives. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Tammy, thank you so much for sharing Cody's story with us. I can't, I I don't want to imagine your heartache that you have suffered um, then and and over these many years, but thank you for sharing uh, your your cute huge baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you for allowing me to. It's it's such a pleasure to have people just listen. Yeah. Well, that's what we we always want to talk about our kids, so <laughs> we are happy to have you talk about Cody here. Thank you.